Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Sikama. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's really nice to be here. Um, well, as mentioned, my name is Karen Sikama. Um, I have been an entrepreneur, uh, experience designer and game designer for almost 15 years now, uh, working in my own two companies, Living Story and Wintertown Experience. Uh, today, I'm going to revisit one of our uh, designs, which is called Lost in Time. Um, it's already from 2010, I think, so it's very nice if someone asks you, do you have a case study to show something about how you design such a thing that you kind of revisit what you made before? And also, uh, it, was, it was nice to do because it also gives you some learnings your, for yourself again. So. Uh, um, <clears throat> I will show you uh, what Lost in Time is in a minute. Um, this is also a story about how to design time travel and immersion engagement of people into cultural heritage, um, which is a kind of typical uh, um, topic that we work on a lot. So we work on that mostly in our uh, company Living Story. And what we do, we design games for team building, um, serious games, adventures um, for adults mainly, but also uh, for children, uh, escape rooms, gamification for cultural heritage. This is uh, our new location, uh, which uh, will uh, become really, really nice also on the inside, because now it's a completely empty uh, uh, building, um, and location-based games. And this is actually a girl um, playing Lost in Time, which is the game that I want to show you uh, something about. And that what, what I tried to do is take some learnings from designing uh, this game. Um, let me first show you how, what the game looks like. So, how to design a game like this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a location-based game that we designed together with um, uh, someone who was really good at making movies. So, this is really uh, uh, also very good in your marketing and promotion uh, efforts. Um, actually, when we started um, designing this game, um, as you saw before, most of the things that we design are physical games and mostly without any technology whatsoever. Um, and this was one of our first attempts to um, use uh, quite intricate technology, uh, really, at that time. Uh, nowadays, you have a Google Maps and everything, but uh, in 2010, it was a bit harder to design a location-based game. And what we did then was really intuitively uh, design the game together with the team. Um, and over the years since then, we realized that what we do when we design a game like this or any other, uh, especially when it involves learning, is that we actually always use kind of the same model. So we turned that into our own uh, design model, which we have called the game-based learning design wheel. It looks like this. 
Um, and this is also for us kind of a checking uh, uh, checklist to design what we do. It is based on uh, a lot of research into um, uh, learning. So it's really based on uh, um, academic research on, uh, and learning theory, and also on research on motivation, uh, experience design, game design, etc. Um, what I tried to do, uh, which is an interesting thing to do in hindsight, is see if we actually designed Lost in Time using the same steps, and I think that we did. So I uh, take you through the wheel by uh, showing you how we did design uh, the Lost in Time game. Um, we start out with the learning goals, which were in this case, have people experience cultural history and learn something about the city that they are uh, in at that moment. Um, and then we actually always try to find uh, a kind of an epic story, some meaning in what you're going to do. In this case, the story is about this professor who has uh, discovered how to travel in time. There is a boy who has uh, been uh, stealing a time machine and has traveled in time as well. And he um, messed up history in a lot of places. So this actually gives you the game goals. Um, you, uh, you get your time travel device yourself, which happens to be in the form of an iPad. Um, on there, there is a map of places where, uh, there has, he, where this boy has been messing with history, and your goal as a player is to travel there and repair history, because, well, you never know what will happen if you mess with, uh, with the time. So, um, well, one of the things that we really wanted to achieve is uh, motivate people to um, experience history. So instead of looking like this when you are in history lessons, uh, we wanted people to really be engaged and active in this, um, uh, well, with these topics. Um, talking about player types, we realized there is a lot of different types of people who are going to play this game. And we tried to find as many kind of verbs. Um, this is actually one of the things that I learned from Willem Jan, who is sitting over there, uh, and who will be talking on this stage later on as well. Um, we tried to put in as many verbs in the game uh, as possible. And of course, it had to be fun as well. Well, you can see, at least for this girl, that worked. Um, and then we turned the verbs into action. So uh, you had to... Um, help extinguish a fire, uh, find a secret location of a secret society in the city, uh, weigh cheeses uh, in uh, some puzzle kind uh, like adventure. Um, and of course, what's always really important um, in learning is that you almost never learn alone. Uh, you always have this social dimension. You also learn from each other. You learn from your family or you learn from your colleagues. So this is uh, what we tried also to kind of design into the Lost in Time game. And then one of the most important questions when you design a game or a gamification solution for learning is, of course, is there any transfer happening? Is the, the, the thing that you have experienced in the game actually tra transfer to your normal, everyday knowledge or skills, etc.? And in this case, what did we want this girl to do? Um, we wanted her to learn about history and about cultural heritage. And because she was walking around on the map, discovering the epic story, having a lot of fun, running around, balancing her iPad like a bucket of water, which actually was the case in one of the mini games, Puzzling uh, to find the end location of this balancing game, uh, finding this end location and extinguishing the fire using the bucket of water that she had. Um, she actually helped extinguishing a fire that was in the city center of Utrecht in 1253. She did that together with her family and that way she learned about city history. And actually, this girl can still tell me the year in which this huge fire in the city center of Utrecht 
actually happened. And this is an hist uh, a real historical fact. And I think there's a lot of history teachers who would really like to have that effect because she played, I think, over seven years ago. So what are the learnings that we took from designing this game? Because it seems like a very smooth and nice operation, which I can really tell you was not. <laughs> um, we had a lot of learnings over the time that we designed the game. Um, and one of the most important ones was that we realized quite early on that one of the most important things that we were doing was actually creating a meaningful experience. Um, and within our team, we actually had a lot of discussion on um, meaningful for whom. Uh, and I think that for, for me, I can really relate to what uh, Melinda Jacobs said this morning. It's about meaning for the user, because when there is no meaning for the user, there is no meaning for anyone, because then no one will actually play or learn anything from it. Um, but within our team, we had it, it, it connected to this theme. We had a lot of discussion about, are we actually <laughs> designing a work of art or um, a commercial product, or is it something in between? Um, and I think the, um, the meaning is really connected to this discussion as well. Um, in the end, we tested a lot, but I think um, we might have been one of those companies that, that started testing a little bit too late because a lot of the game was already, um, well, not finished, but we were <laughs> quite uh, far along the way before we really started testing if what we were doing and what we wanted people to experience and learn was actually happening. Um, so in the games afterwards, we started doing that much, much, much earlier on in our process. And what we also found out is that for us in our design process, and that's why we put the epic story already quite early on in the model, is that the narrative is really central to the way that we um, design our experiences. Because the, when you uh, have a good story behind it, you can actually tie everything that you do in the game, in the experience, into the story and make sure that the whole thing fits together and people uh, start feeling that it's a fluent experience. Um, so you really need uh, a central and strong narrative to, to carry that along uh, the whole experience. And in this case, um, it's quite important because you ha um, uh, when you design a location-based game, you have to take into account that people are running around in the real world, encountering buses and taxis and other uh, people around them. So the, it's, it's really hard to keep them focused into the kind of game world that you are uh, creating for them. Um, for us, uh, also, uh, we are very, very proud of, of the Lost in Time game, but also realized that uh, having this location-based technology is on the one hand really, really great tool to uh, design experiences like this, but on the other hand, um, it's a means to an end. So if you have a good narrative carrying your game, your experience, your design, sometimes, uh, and for us, a lot of times you actually don't need any technology at all. Um, and, well, this is a whole topic in itself, also when it comes to Lost in Time, but I wanted to mention it anyway on the slide because this is one of the things, um, our business model is one of the things that also we thought about back then too late in the process. So uh, one of the learnings that we got from this a process really well is that you have to, if you want to design a commercial product or something that will actually earn you enough money that that you can, uh, that it will earn you a living, um, then it's really important to take that into the design process from the beginning, which also ties into testing and meaning, etc. Um, well, this. Um, uh, uh, this model we applied after this to a few other locations as well, um, which gives actually quite nice uh, pictures. Uh, this is a game in the forest, uh, having the same principle, and this is in a village, so we can actually do it in many different uh, locations. Using this same game-based learning design, will we actually also use it for uh, any other 
experience we design. Um, at the moment, we are working on a publication uh, based on this wheel, but uh, unfortunately for the publication, the <laughs> work in our companies is so much that we didn't really find the time um, to write uh, and have really uh, the attention for writing uh, uh, the, the story of this wheel. Um, but of course, you can find uh, information on our uh, website. So, thank you a lot. Thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you.